don't know if you heard the fun thing that happened in Denver. What fun thing happened in Denver? The part where airplane parts fell from the sky. Yeah, that happened. Dan was out grocery shopping right near where that happened, right near where there were pieces falling. And he, he was wondering why like three fire trucks suddenly went by. And then he checked Twitter. I saw like that giant, if, if you guys didn't see what happened, there was like a plane flying over. One of the engines failed, which is. It had just taken off. Which it, they, they call it an engine failure, which can cover also known as explosion. Yeah. Um, and there were so like. What, what happened was it took off from Denver International Airport headed toward Honolulu, but then it hit the electromagnetic shield around the airport that they're testing for when the Illuminati take over. It's kind of like WandaVision, but not. And, you know, Nine. wrong. See, you're Nine. joking. Am I? But, did, great. We're, we're going to get picked Cause, up. Cause like you're going to explain why it's not possible. As well, though I'm totally serious. Well, you know what? Considering how popular conspiracy folks are, why not? Let, let, let's have a conspiracy theory on my show. I'll, I'll get some ad revenue. Nine. I don't care. Uh, but yeah, it was it was crazy to see there's like giant parts of the engine. And just were, nine. a miracle nobody was hurt. Raining down in people's yards and nine. like shrapnel from hell. And everybody, like nobody on the ground was hurt. Nobody on the plane was hurt. Although considering nobody was hurt, that is like that is like winning the weirdest lottery because if that shit lands in your yard, a ching. Of course, you know if if it landed on your head, you'd be kind of dead. Yeah, like I think somebody's car got murdered. <laughs> well, you know, unless it's like Christine or something, you can't really murder a car. True. Uh, all right, let's let's get the intro going. Oi. Oi. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, bring back all sorts of horrible stuff. Little segment we like to call. I get the shot correct. There we go. What the fuck is wrong with you? And we're we're gonna start off. I th this one everyone was pleased as punch to send me this story they they were beating down my door to make sure i saw <laughs> this one concerning isn't it when our audience gets a little too excited it's usually not good yeah this I, I think at least at least a bunch of people sent me this i forget how much um federal agent sees 2.8 million in cocaine frosted cornflake cereal. They're Fair. great. <laughs> no, we did not rehearse that. Now, now we know the secret to Tony the Tiger. How he's always that positive and upbeat and energetic. Federal agents say they seized. Frosted cereal in Cincinnati because the cornflakes turned out to be soaked in cocaine. Biko, a narcotic detector dog with U.S. Customs and Border Protection. I like how they credited the dog by name. That's so nice. Good dog. Alerted authorities to the cocaine-coated flakes in a shipment of cereal that originated from South America. The 44 pounds of cocaine cereal seized has an estimated value of $2.82 million dollars. Uh, according to authorities, who said the shipment was headed to a private residence in Hong Kong. Officers found white powder and the flakes were coated in a grayish substance after the dog alerted them to the shipment. Smugglers will hide narcotics in anything imaginable. Here's my question. Like, I, I've never done cocaine. You're not supposed to do a lot of cocaine, are you're, you? You're, you're not supposed to do cocaine. Okay, but if you're going to do cocaine and you don't want to die, you're probably not supposed to have a bowl of cocaine-coated cereal for breakfast. <laughs> Which is funny. Um, well, that's... Uh, okay, I actually know what's going on here, and it's weird. Because I watch too much uh, true crime shit. 
they will put cocaine in anything in an attempt to smuggle it in. They right. they used to put all right, I, and I'm going by watching a show on this, but it's based on reality, I guess. Um, yeah, watching Narcos, it's fucked up. They used to dissolve the cocaine in gasoline to sneak it over here, and then and then uh, strain it out of the gas, and then chemically get it out of the gasoline. They do anything to get the fucking cocaine here. But like, how do you get it off the cornflakes? Um, are you just selling people tainted cornflakes that they like sprinkle on top of their regular cornflakes? So they have breakfast with a little bit of a kick. That's sounding more attractive to me the more I talk. Because I'm always tired. No. No. Um, no, it's... it's I, there is a way to separate it. I know that they, they, they do this all the time. They chemically separate the co cocaine out from whatever they put it in. I don't know how because I am not smart. I just know they do it. You're not educated in the ways of cocaine i just it i thought they were just gonna they thought they were just gonna casually pass the frosted flakes nobody's gonna notice I mean, it, it's I mean, frosted flakes. Plans go that's one of the better ones we've heard it's frosted flakes get yeah. it yeah oh my that's, god do you think you could do little frosted mini wheats that's probably you know. That's probably how they pit the dude, the smuggler dude, pitched it to it to his to his like boss. It's like, okay, so frosted flakes, huh? But like for grownups, Bob, get the fuck out of here. No, really, no, no, no. Follow me here. Oh, come on, hear me out, man. You 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 said there's there's no wrong there's no bad ideas. That's a bad idea, Bob. And it obviously was a bad idea because they found it. Um, seriously, oh my god! Yeah, uh, th this is good. This was heading on to um, Hong Kong, and it was going to be uh, distributed. So uh, maybe, maybe they didn't separate the cocaine out. Maybe you're right. Maybe they just gave people like little packets you of cinnamon. Had a bowl of pick me the fuck up every morning. But we we have even more cocaine fun. Uh cocaine fun. The 80s. Uh, this one comes from Seattle, and this happened. It happened again. It it fucking it. Woman finds kilo of cocaine in crochet kit bought at thrift store. Good God! Woman looking to pick up a new hobby was in for a big surprise with her latest thrift store find. According to a Seattle Police Department press release, the woman purchased a kit to crochet animal hats at a Seattle area thrift store. When she opened the kit, she found a heavy, suspicious looking item encased in yellow rubber with 100% written on the outside. Police said it gave off an odd odor. The woman called 911, prompting officers to take possession of the suspicious package. Officers, officials later confirmed the package contained a kilogram of cocaine. Now, I don't know how much money a kilogram of cocaine is worth. Probably more than a secondhand crochet kit. I would think so, <laughs> yes. Um, I, I read it, my theory, the last time this happened, which this has happened before, the last time this happened was, this was the drop, and someone was supposed to come in, what are we going to do? I'm going to put the cocaine in something no one will ever buy. Yeah. What? Oh, it's a secondhand crochet kit. No one is ever going to buy that shit. It'll sit at the thrift store. You can go in, buy it, and you'll get the cocaine. No one is going to get a crochet kit from the thrift but store. Then Jesse Pinkman fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> like, of all the. <sighs> Either that or. The other, the other possibility I can see is like the cops are at the door and you need someone to stash that shit and you just shove it in the crochet shake kit, not realizing that mom's about to donate it to Goodwill. Now, and then you're I, fucked. And some people are like, well, why do you keep it? It was like thousands of dollars. Like, no, you don't want to keep that. No. They will, someone is going to come looking 
for that yeah. cocaine. Yeah. You don't want to be there. That when... belongs to somebody, and it's not somebody you want knocking on your door. No. They do very illegal things. It's kind like of the... cocaine. Yes, it's it's kind of kind of their job. I just <laughs> the kind of people that sell cocaine are not the kind of people you want showing up at your house. If you're just looking to crochet hats for puppies. Nobody's going to buy a crochet kit at the thrift store, they said. It's perfect, they said. I don't know if y'all dealers know this, but there's a pandemic. <laughs> and there's a lot of people scrambling for any fucking hobby that will pass an hour of the day. Me? I took up TikToking. <laughs> people are making bread. Like, it's Little House on the Prairie out there right now. <laughs> Oh, great. Now I got the fucking theme song in my head. Christ. She's rebooting that, you know. Oh, God, no, stop. Yeah, Melissa Gilbert's working on a reboot. <sighs> Next up is Arizona. Again, it happened. How Some of these, I'm like, I could see it happening once. But the fact that this keeps happening over and over and over, we are a doomed species. And I don't like saying things like that. It's very negative of me to say that we are a doomed species, but... It's so rarely negative. We don't learn shit. Arizona man accused of faking own kidnapping to evade work. College police arrested a man who claimed he had been kidnapped to get out of work. Uh, Casa Grande Dispatch uh, reported uh, police say they found 19-year-old Brendan Solis near a water tower with his hands bound behind his back and a bandana stuffed in his mouth committing to the bit so uh, Solis said, told police he was kidnapped by two masked men as the men knocked him unconscious and drove him around a vehicle before leaving him by a water tower Detectives conducted uh, an investigation and found no evidence of a kidnapping or assault had occurred. Officers say when they looked at surveillance video corroborate the story of him being hit over the head, stuffed in the car in front of his home, they saw no signs of any of his story being true. He also alleged the kidnapping occurred because a large amount of money his father had hidden around town, which was also fabricated. Officers say Solas said admitted he made up the story as an excuse to get out of work. All right, so you had two options here. You could quit. Yeah. Or you could concoct an elaborate scheme, a fucking follies of, of, of the sort of shit. Or you could make up a believable lie that the police don't have to be involved in. Right? I got food poisoning is a good one. I have a migraine. Got a nail in my tire. I have a cough and I was around someone with COVID. Sorry, you're going to have to bleep me twice now. Sorry about that. I keep forgetting. Like, there's a million things that don't have to involve the cops that are entirely plausible stories that will get you out of a day of fucking work. And yet. And, and fucking yet. Coolish say Solis was fired from his job at the tire factory. That's not a, it's not a, that's actually the, the name of the place. It's not like a tire factory. It's the tire. Anyway, it's probably like some hipster bar. I doctor's appointment. Yeah. Plenty, plenty of shit. Car my broke down. My mom. Like how sick. many times have you actually called out sick that this is what you have to do? Like, if you have a really cool mom, you'd be like, my mom's sick, and then call your mom, and she'll back you up. If you got a cool mom, right? My mom was not that cool. <laughs> my mom would have been like, get your ass to work. Like, now, not only do you not have a job, you're going to jail. And you, yeah. and you know what you need to pay a lawyer when you go to jail? Fucking job! You've, you've just... And the kind of jobs you get in jail pay about a penny an hour, and they're not optional. And it 
also seems like all the effort he made to not go to work, he might as well have just gone yeah. to fucking work. It's amazing how people will work so hard to avoid work that would be easier than what they do to avoid it. Like, if you just weigh it out, just go to work. Well, this this is a case of I guess I guess you can consider this going to work. Um and yeah. Here we go. It, this this is not a this, I guess this is going to work. This is just maybe maybe you should have stayed home and worked that day too. Homeowners return home to find Florida burglar lying on couch watching TV. Lake City Police received a peculiar call for service for a burglary early Wednesday evening. For seven officers say they were informed that a man had broken into a home on uh, Quail Heights Terrace when he decided to watch some television. On one return home, they found Jay Knight, 34, lying on their couch while watching TV. Knight had even put on clothing he found inside the house. Keep it. <laughs> Police arrived and found Knight attempting to leave the area. That's that's a wonderful euf euphemism there. He was detained and admitted to kicking in the door. Knight took several items from the residence and put them into a bag placed by the door before he began watching TV. Like, really? What the fuck came on that was so... Do you know what burglary is, sir? The objective is to get out with your stolen items without wait, getting caught. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. February 19th. Let me, let me check and see what was going on. Um... Oh, shit! Uh, let me double check. Yeah, um... He was... The motherfucker was watching the impeachment. <laughs> I was... Because I'm sitting there going, what was on TV that he possibly could not miss? Because everything's on the streaming service. You go home and watch that. No, no. It was the 19th. I... 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 I think it was. I th anyway, let me see. Yeah, the really week. Uh... Is this like the long lost sixth Trump kid <laughs> conceived at a Mar a Lago party who just wants to know if dad's going to pay his child support ever? He's not. Uh. Can someone check me on this? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty. I'm, I'm pretty sure. If I'm wrong, I'll you know. Like burglary, you take the shit and then you leave. Leaving is is a vital component. No, he uh, no. It, was, it wasn't the impeachment. Nineteenth. No, no, no. He was he was acquitted on thirteenth. But so it wasn't that. What the so what the fuck was he watching? Just watching fucking Law and Order reruns. <laughs> the thing about law and order reruns is there's always a law and order rerun always any time of day no matter where you are on the planet there's a law and order rerun all the fucking time yeah how many how many episodes do you think there are of that show because like there are what like four different versions now all of them have been running for more than ten seasons. I don't know. All I know is when aliens show up, they're going to ask. They're going to ask to be taken not to our leader, but to Jerry Orbach. <laughs> Mariska Hardigay. I think yeah. she's actually been on longer. <sighs> Take us to Mariska Hardigay. But seriously, you're in the middle of a crime. Yeah. One that requires a little bit of subterfuge and subtlety and not being noticed. Just hanging out, putting on people's clothes, laying on their couch, watching TV. You're not, I mean, did, did you just give up on the burglary? You should still leave if you do. Just Like, I have ADHD. I am really easily distracted. I feel like I, w I would be able to stay focused if I was committing a felony. Wait, it is a burglary. Did it occur to you to take the TV with you? There you go. You're already stealing shit. 
I, I, I love the attempting to leave the area. That That is the best euphemism here. He attempted to leave the area. Fucking ran! Yeah. That's what you meant to say there. Ah. Uh, all right, let's see. Um, next story is, all right, very important, folks. Th th there are places you don't ma say certain things. Um, you, you, you don't say things about the president that will get the Secret Service interested in you. Um, you don't say bomb in an airport. Ever. And you don't go to a, to, to a, uh, a bank and say, I'm robbing the place. Even if you're joking, because once you say those words, you have officially robbed the bank. And this was probably no backseats. Hmm? No back and this is probably the most likely unlikely bank robber uh, we've ever had. I, this is new. This this is a first. This is a new one. Woman in motorized wheelchair robs downtown Jacksonville Bank. It's Florida. Of course, it's Florida. Bank located blocks away from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office headquarters was robbed Monday by a woman in a motorized wheelchair. Bank's robbery was reported about noon at the Regions Bank branch. Police say the woman showed up to discuss an account, but got into an argument with a teller that escalated when she threatened to kill everyone in the bank and announced she was robbing the place. Woman left the bank after she was given some cash. It was taken in custody nearby a short time later. Okay. Is that the new I want to speak to your manager? I, I, I'm robbing the place. Kill everybody? I'm going to burn down the building. I it, See, it... Uh, all right. That's just never going to go the way you think. And I'm, I'm not... I'm not, you know... Uh, a person in a wheelchair, it, I'm not like dogging on you, but you have to consider if you are in a motorized wheelchair, a car is a lot faster. Yeah, they don't go that fast. Than a motorized wheelchair. Now, I don't, you might soup that shit up. That is something you could do. You get like a fucking 40 mile an hour wheelchair. Sure. But I don't think that was the case here. I don't think you were taking into account your getaway speed. I want to know what kind of argument you get into with a bank teller that ends with, I'm going to kill everyone in the bank and take all your money, even though I'm not armed. And, and that's the important thing. If even saying it, you have effectively robbed the bank. Yeah. It's, you may. But, have, yeah. Well, why would you say that thing if you can't back it up? I don't understand. Because what if the teller is like, fuck around and find out? Let's do it. <laughs> well, legally they can't, but um, life would be a whole lot more interesting and deadly if they could. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I, I don't understand what, what fuck happened here. It, you know, at the like, point with their decision making process there. At the point they're handing me the cash that we've officially robbed the bank. I would think that would be the point where I would go, what have I done? You might start thinking about your choices. Like, yeah. I'd be like, no, no, you can have that back, really. Can I say I'm sorry <laughs> at this point? Is, Not, there, is there a way I could walk away from this? And not, not, not the, the point, just that, that's when you just leave. Walk away is a poor choice of words, I'm realizing, but you know. Yeah. Is there a way we could all just call this even? Not and not. Because, you know, when you say I'm robbing the place, boom, there goes that silent alarm. Yeah, they take that shit pretty serious. Yep. All right. Last They're not going to laugh at your funny joke. No, it's it's not. Yeah. Last one this week, and uh, it's Florida, and it's uh, Covidiots. So there's that. Um, the links that people are going to, to avoid the mask thing. This one just blew my fucking mind. And I just don't, it's not that hard. Well, this, uh, holy shit. Men at Florida hotel posed as U.S. Marshals 
to avoid wearing masks. The men threatened to arrest hotel staff who asked them to wear masks while on the premises. Look at those two there. Um, they look like... <clears throat> This looks like someone had a sculpture of a person and then they asked like an eighth grader who had never held clay before to replicate that sculpture. Tara. I'm just saying they look similar, but like not. Two men are accused of pretending to be a, to be federal marshals and flashing phony credentials to get out of wearing facial coverings at a South Florida hotel resort. When the staff at the Wyndham Deerfield Beach Resort asked Walter Wayne Brown, 53, and Gary Brummett, 81, to cover their faces, the men refused and threatened to arrest employees and saddle the hotel with a fine. The scheme collapsed when one employee thought they were acting suspicious and called police, and a real U.S. Marshal arrived. <coughs> And arrested the man on charges of impersonating a federal officer. And I assume it didn't go the way it goes for the Winchesters. No. Yeah. Hotel manager told investigators Brummett went to the front desk early this month to ask for coffee and then pretended to be a marshal when asked to don a face mask. He then flashed a laminated card that said he was medically exempt from wearing... Okay, pick one. Yeah. Pick a lot. A grift. Also, honestly... Front desk at that hotel, they're probably like, I don't care if you're Jesus. Put on a fucking mask. According to the complaint, when the manager asked for him to put on a mask, Brummett pointed to a badge he wore on his belt. Do you know what this means? I'm a U.S. Marshal and can have you arrested if you force me to wear a mask. No, he can't. No, 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 he really can't. That's, that's, you can't, you can't do this. The links these two idiots went to. Congratulations! You went from causing a scene to a felony, like yeah. that. I mean, you don't have to worry, I guess, about mask mandates in prison. You might have to worry about the other thing that I've not going to say for a third time: <laughs> the human malware. Um, eighty-one years old. That's right at the point you should be wearing one. Yeah. And yet. I mean, you're already living in heaven's waiting room. <laughs> where the governor is like, everybody just rub on each other. Fuck it. Like, at this point. You've made, you've got a fake badge. You've made up, you've gone to all this, you've, you've gone, it's like the dude with the fucking kidnapping. You've gone to all these outlandish lengths to avoid doing something just out of fucking spite. Right. When you could have just put a piece of cloth over your stupid plague vector holes. But no, you're not the boss of me. Except. We're so stupid. Like. Yes. I don't know if other countries have this problem or if this is a uniquely American thing. We they do because they, they we exported it. I'm not kidding. That like we will go to such extraordinary stupid lengths just out of spite. Just to feel like we got one over on the man. It it's it's like it's I don't you probably have you seen the world's end? Yeah. It's like the end of the world's end. The fucking aliens are like, oh, fuck it. What's the point? Yeah. What's the fucking point? Like, there's no talking to us. <sighs> Dan got his new uh, starting shit at the Costco mask. <laughs> that it just, it's a black mask and it says in huge white letters, the mask goes over your nose. <laughs> I, and he just enjoys wearing it in public and glaring at people. The, the, that little failure I see all the time. That's almost as bad as not wearing one at all. Because yeah. you're like. Don't bother. Are you not getting the. Are you not grasping this? Oh, God. Oh, 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 God. Um, so, yeah, the first thing we learned this week is. If you're going to such outlandish lengths that you're risking a fucking felony not yeah. to do the thing. And the thing is not that difficult to do. No. Just grow the fuck up. 
I mean, this is not like this is not like fucking the Lord saying kill your fucking firstborn. No, and then saying psych. But niece has no problem wearing her little pink masks every time they have to leave the house. Just goddamn do the thing. Um, we've she's learned, this many. We've learned that Lol JK doesn't exactly work in real life. No. <laughs> That's that's not one where they're like, oh, okay, we're that's fine. You were just playing. We're cool. Um, I mean, men think that's how it works. Of course they do. Because men just say horrible shit to women, like, I'll kill you. And then when you get upset about that, they're like, oh, just kidding. Why can't you do a joke? Um, we've learned in the middle of the crime is not when you just sort of give up on doing the crime. No. You, you're committed. If you're in the There's house, a certain point where yeah, you're if you're halfway in the woods, you might as well go forward because either way, you're walking the same distance out. You, you, you've got the bag of stolen goods waiting for you, but don't just like you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy the sound system. It's really nice yeah. in here. Um, oh, man. You know what? I'm gonna miss the people's court. We've learned that. Uh, yeah. Also. If you if you really don't want to go to work so much that you're doing an elaborate amount of work to not go to work, maybe you should not go to work ever again. Yeah, just quit that fucking job. Because you are putting yourself you're putting yourself into the position of you're committing a felony yeah. to not go to that job. And you know what's worse than your stupid job? Prison. We've learned that people will buy the most unusual things at a thrift store. They'll buy the things you won't think they'll buy. So maybe be a little be a little more cautious where you stash your fucking kilogram of cocaine. And you know, we've learned that you just never know when there's a golden ticket in a thrift store. And finally this week we've learned the outlandish lengths people will go to to get cocaine across the border in the frosted flakes. It's like that that was that is a terrible mix up waiting to happen. Yeah. Like you think sugar makes your kids go crazy. So you go, you <laughs> wait you give them a bowl of cocaine. You, you, you give them breakfast, you turn around 2 seconds, you go outside. Little Timmy's got the SUV over his fucking head. 